speaking. And the last one is, uh, will be Luca, okay? okay. To mute your computers when you are not talking, because if not, the problem, the sound is not. Mm. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are going to begin the beta webinar number number eight, uh, which is focused in in this case in energy efficiency challenges in the food industry uh, processes. So, first of all, uh, we would like to apologize for for the external server problems that we found in the in the seventies of. September and uh, we would like to also uh, thank to to all the uh, speakers to move the agenda and change the date to to do the webinar today and also to all the participants who have previously uh, subscribed to to the webinar. And before we start, I would like to inform to all of you that this webinar is going to be recorded and also uploaded to the Vida website. And please, I also need the approval of all the speakers to upload your presentation to the to the video website. Are you agree? Yes, it's okay. Yes, okay. Also for me, Matteo. Yes, for me, Maria. Okay. Uh, for me, Luca, did you hear me? Hear you. Luca? Okay, for, for so me, here... For, for me. Okay, Hi. perfect. Um, we found that uh, one of the pro uh, the problems that caused the, the fail with the, with the connection of the platform last, uh, last uh, two weeks ago and also today is the presentation from one of the of the SMEs from Profil Apps, so we are going. Uh, finally, we can upload this to the to the platform, and we are going to send uh, this presentation to your email, so you can follow it 
within your computers uh, meanwhile under stands is going to to speak so i will send you to all of you the the presentation in a in a few minutes uh, you can use the chat that you can find in the right in the right hand side to send all the questions uh, that you have and we will answer them at the end of the of the webinar okay so first of all, Irene is going to present the, the VIDA project and she is going to specifically focus in the demonstration voucher since uh, we are now involved in the, in the second call of that kind of, of voucher. Uh, next, uh, Javier Navarro is going to present the main challenges in the energy efficiency in the food, uh, in the processing food, in the food processing industry. And later we have uh, three pitch uh, presentations about the solution or that SMEs have developed to to these challenges. Uh, first of first of all, Matteo Santi from NSM will will speak about the software for for these challenges. Uh, next will be understand that we present the module for purification of liquid waste, and at the end. Luca Pacifico from Renergy will present their solution called uh, Airmold. So now we are going to begin with Rene. Please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Maria, for the brief presentation. In this webinar, Aragon Food Cluster from Spain is, host, is hosting this webinar, in which we are introducing the projects and the different funding schemes. <coughs> So VIDA, which stands for Value Added Innovation in Food Chains, aims to accelerate the implementation of innovative technologies in food sector which improve the uses of water, energy, and for this scope, key enabled technologies are required. VIDA project is, is a cascade funding in which nearly 3.5 million of euros directly support SMEs. As you can see, in this project, we participate with 10 partners from seven different countries in the European uh, Union. Uh, the video scope is to obtain different cross-sectoral nexus among food, water, energy, and key enabled technologies. Those technologies are investment and technologies that will allow European industry to retain competitiveness and capitalize on new markets. The Industrial Technologies Program focuses on four cats, nanotechnologies, advanced materials, advanced manufacturing and processing, and biotechnology. Who can apply for a uh, for there? Well, the requirements for participants are mainly to be an SME according European definition. For this item on the presentation, you will find the link to take the verification test. To belong to one of the following sectors, food, energy, water, or cat. Applicants also must declare the financial stability and be a member of a BIDA cluster or be headquartered in a BIDA region. As you can see uh, on, the, on this slide, on the map, you can see the different areas. Portugal, Germany, Netherlands, Czech Republic, Denmark, uh, all these um, countries operate at national level, and Spain at Aragon region, and Italy in this Lombardy region. Okay, let's see then um, on this slide a brief summary on, of the three different funding schemes that are open. The Innovation Voucher, ISV, is a grant that goes to 1,000 to 5,000 euro maximum. It is open call till the next January um, or budget is exhausted and a time period execution of six months. Uh, one of me can apply for this type of vouchers, which uh, scope is to subcontract services related to intellectual property support, uh, innovation management, advanced manufacturing, eco-innovation consultancy for resources, water and energy efficiency, new business models, market studies and regulatory studies, small technological support or feasibility studies, 
and travel costs only for official VD events and conferences fees. Innovation support vouchers can also provide background knowledge needed for other voucher applications. The next one, the validation voucher application, must represent the joint actions between one beneficiary SME from one of the food, water, energy, or kit sector, and one service provider. The validation voucher allows the applicant, which is an SME, to get their innovative technology validated in a testing facility that needs to be approved by the evaluation review panel. The aim of this voucher is to validate diverse innovative solutions in the food chain industry. The applicant uh, can apply for a grant of 10 to 25,000 euros worth in services and technology to be tested. And very, very important, the technology, it requires to be in a TRL level between five and eight before the starting project. Let's see on the next slide more in deep uh, the info about demonstration vouchers. Uh, demonstration vouchers is the third scheme, the one, the, the one that needs to be presented in two partnerships. Be the demonstration voucher are meant to address one common challenges related to resource efficiency in food value chain from food production to feed processing. Uh, those schemes um, must include a joint proportion and at least two SMEs. One of those SMEs should be a prospective user. All proposals must include a good description of the innovativeness and properly justify that at the starting of the project it's in TRLC plus of the technology proposed as a solution for the specific challenges. The eligible budget must be in the range of 20,000 uh, and 250,000 per joint project, which means that each SME must participate with a minimum budget of 10,000 euros. The eligible activities are personal costs, subcontracting services, and travel costs. The maximum duration of the action is 20 months, one year, and may not be less than uh, half uh, a year. The first call was open in February of this year and closed at the end of April. And the second call is already open and ends at the end of October. So that means you have one month to prepare a good proposal. Now I, um, I would like to present a brief overview of a statistical results of VIDA during this uh, period of execution. And regarding ISB, 13 out of 22 proposal or submitted proposals were funded. In case of validation voucher, 7 out of 15 submitted proposals were granted. And regarding demonstration vouchers, a total of eight proposals out of 45 were rented in a total amount of 1.5 million euros. All of these schemes present a total of 53 SMEs funded. Regarding food sector and the funded proposals uh, were related to greenhouses, breweries, farming irrigation, wineries, and aquaculture. Solutions were relating to um, water and nutrients recovery, water reuse, cloud and wireless data acquisition, uh, pulse electric fuel for agri-food agri processes, and green agriculture. Sorry, it's super difficult to hear you right now. No, to me. Uh, application form, complete, 
movement. The evaluation process uh, of different, um, well, in the case of demonstration voucher, uh, or uh, more exactly, all proposals are reviewed by the independent evaluators, and previously, previously all of them are checked in terms of eligibility, capacity, and excellence. We are committed to send letter with funding approval or rejection results in a maximum period of 10 weeks in case of demonstration vouchers. Project starts after signing the formal contract. Uh, that means the, the grant engagement with the coordinator of the project. Anyway, um, in case of doubt, uh, do not hesitate to contact your local cluster on the slide. You can find the email or the contact uh, details of the different BIDE clusters. Anyway, if you're in this presentation, if more doubts um, have arrived, um, please write your questions on the chat section, and we'll try to, to answer as quick as soon as, soon as possible. Uh, that's all from my side, and thank you for attention. And now I give the word to um, to Maria for the next presentation. Thanks to um, all of you. Irena, just quickly, um, there were a few sound issues on the uh, demonstration voucher. Thanks, Irene, uh, for your summary of the visa project and uh, the visa vouchers. And now we are going to continue with uh, Javier. Navarro from Bea Global. He is going to present Maria. the Maria. the Vida challenges focused uh -huh. in the efficient, efficiency in the energy food, food processing industry. So please, uh, Javier. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Javier Navarro Leat, and I'm going to talk to you about the challenges of energy efficiency in the food processing industry. And during this exposition, I will follow the following scheme. First, I will explain the activities of our company and the type of projects we do. Secondly, I will focus on showing the company activity in energy, in energy efficiency projects, developing the key points of our experience in projects related to the food industry and its main challenges in energy. Finally, I will present a success case on, on the topic discussed today in the webinar, the project developed for the meat processing industry, Arendo. Uh, in the first part of my exhibition, I want to present the activity that we do in Vea Global. We mainly work on three main branches, energy projects, environmental and su sustainability projects, and engineering engineering and works. And these projects are developed through the joint work of four transversal areas, which are the area of research, development and innovation, the area of project management and funding, the area of strategy and organization, and the area of training. Our work areas carry out the three types of work for very varied clients such as those belonging to the public sector of our industries. The industrial sector is where the clients or the agroalimentary industry belong, on which we will focus today. As I mentioned, energy is one of the fundamental pillars of BEA Global. We are specialized in energy efficiency studies. Within this framework, we have perceived the food industry as one of the sector sectors in which the potential for energy saving and emissions, as well as the economic, is greater. We can say this because macroeconomic studies of the agri-food sector highlight resource scarcity and climate change as a current and future megatrend. This sector, due to its structural characteristics and its growing exposure to foreign markets, has to adapt this challenge and improve its competi competitiveness, complying with the sustainability standards demanding by the target market, while at the same time reducing its production costs. 
In addition, the European project Green Foods concludes that the meat subsector is the most important sector, sector of the industry due to its turnover. In addition, meat and meat products have the greatest environmental impact of all products in the area of food and consumer beverage in the Euro European Union. In food industry, energy costs represent the fourth highest cost after raw materials, waste man management and labors. The most relevant electrical and thermal demand are refrigeration and steam boilers. Thus, the cost of energies, energy has been identified as one of the most influential, influential in the distribution of the cost structure. However, energy prices fluctuate considerably, which can destabilize the profit and loss accounts of agri-food companies. Therefore, Reducing consumption and the consequent pack has been de detected both, both in the initial phase of the livestock farm and in the sub subsequent transformation phase. It should also be noted that the auxiliary, auxiliary industrial facilities, which are the system attached to the main product process, without which production cannot be carried out. Consum have an energy, an energy consumption greater than 90% of the total in the meat processing sector. Then, the process followed. In our projects to achieve the maximum saving desired by our customers is the energy in the energy field consists in three phases. The first phase is the improvement of energy efficiency in the current situation. In this phase of the project, the specific method methodology followed is based on compli compliance with standards of UNE 16247 and has basically, basically consistent on first a, a period of preparation where we make the scope we give some information channels and we make our program and a measurement planning planning second we visit the facilities of the the facilities and we make an in inspections also we collect the data and uh, with all these data uh, we make the energy accounting and uh, we check the improvement opportunities in the second phase in the second phase is done the analysis the analysis of the current level of digi digitalization in the facilities through the through the study of existing equip the existing equipments and also is presented a de detailed definition of the technical proposals to obtain a connected industry 4.0 in all the consumption areas considered in the study. After this process, our client have all the information to know how to have a perfectly efficient industry that has the best level of automatization. Then, finally, after all the previous study and together with the client's decisions on how to cover the transition to the new energy situation, the industry adaptation project is developed. This adaptation has a set of technical proposals and the tailored stud study of the systems that, in the specific case of the company, carry a greater weight in energy consumption. Once the technical migration to a 4.0 industry si system has been developed, the, the operation of the company's system follow follows the following scheme of action. A series of sensors receive the necessary information from the company facilities. The information is compiled and stored in a control center and with the information obtained, as obtained a series of action and produced on these systems to correct the existing energy inefficiencies. In this, in this slide, 
we can observe an example of the devices, the devices and system that works in a compressed air systems system. This is just an example because a system like this one is um, is developed for any um, machine in the company or for any facility that uh, has an energy consumption. Then we have some sensors, a control with a computer, and some actuators that uh, give us the best energy consumption in our company for every uh, facility. And to finish, I would like to give some data on the um, energy savings that we can achieve by implementing the intelli intelligent uh, energy management system developed by BEA Global. After the analysis of all the primary and secondary data obtained in the Arento Industria, Arento Industria Carnica project, 22 saving opportunities were obtained and presented to the company in detail and prioritized according to the return on investments. The measures applied resulted in saving of more than 35% of the total energy consumed in the industry. The savings obtained were distributed as follows. The 70% in lighting, 6% in electrical equipment loses, 30% in heat generation, 40% in heat generation, 17% in cold generation, and 20% in compressed air equipment. The savings rep represent a very con considerable econo economic saving for the company, which is why they were very satisfied with this project. Uh, with this project. This system is representable in the most industries of agro-food sector, being able to obtain similar results. Once all this has been explained, it only remains for me to express my gratitude for your attention. I look forward to any question you may have at the end of the rest of the presentations. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Javier Navarro, for your deepest explanation about the challenges in the energy efficiency in the food processing industry. So now we are going to continue with the PIPS presentation about the solution that uh, the SMEs have uh, found. Ah, sorry, sorry, I, uh, sorry. Uh, before, Ian is going to repeat the... Um, like number 10 because some of the attendees have uh, uh, have uh, we have some sound yeah. problems during the presentation so she's going to repeat all the information about how to apply to the BIDA demonstration voucher so Irene? yeah thank you Maria. Um, you were asking about how to apply the different um, uh, vouchers so um for in the case there are different um steps uh, for uh, ISV and BV uh, vouchers the first of all uh, for all type of voucher it's very important to access um via different online sources in <clears throat> so please uh, have a look at the website of BIDA project where you can find uh, ISV and BV application forms on PDF format. Into that PDF, uh, PDF document there is a submit button, so directly the document upload on BIDA platform. Okay? Uh, in the case of demonstration voucher, it's slightly different because uh, first, the first step you have to do is to register on the platform, Cloud5. Uh, from the Cloud5 platform, then you can access to the application form, do uh, download, uh, and when you fill the, the form, uh, yeah, via the application form, the, the platform Cloud5, you can upload the demonstration voucher. So, um, for, uh, in order to get the registration on the platform Cloud5, 
it's important to send an email to our College of Baltine cluster, okay? And uh, anyway, if you have problems in during the steps for uh, uploading the different uh, vouchers, please don't hesitate to contact any member of the uh, the partner. I don't know if it is clear now or if you need more clarification, please write me uh, a question or a specific question on the chat. Thanks. Thanks, Irene. Yes, you can use the, the chat if you need any clarification about this uploading of the proposals process. So now, yes, <laughs> we are going to continue with the a bit sorry because I have forgotten the, that question from one of the participants. So we are going to continue uh, with the pitch presentation from uh, SME. They are NSM and uh, Matteo Tanzi is going to, to do the, the presentation to speak about the software for energy water monitoring, real-time consumption analysis and modeling and optimization. So this uh, Matteo is your it's your Hello to everybody. Thank you for uh, hosting me in this uh, uh, nice uh, webinar. I will present our proposal for this uh, call of demonstration vouchers as we are looking for some partners or demonstration sites, as I will tell you uh, in the end of the presentation. As I already said, uh, energy in food and beverage is a very relevant uh, issue. So I put here just some data from the Italian situation. And the interesting point is also that it's not just a, a relevant consumption, but there is also a room for a lot of energy saving. Uh, so I put here the data from this uh, uh, research, the 20-30% of energy saving potentials in uh, the overall in the food and beverage industry in Italy, with 40% in the milk and dairy. There are a lot of specific issues that we are dealing with during our work in this field, like, for example, the inefficient use of energy, but also of fresh water for cooling. So there is a lot of uh, water spoiled in, uh, in the process that could be used in a much more efficient way. Uh, one of the key issues is the lack of uh, uh, data, available data from the different systems. So the system that is um, controlling all the, the process or the single asset, like uh, a, refrigeration, um, a refrigeration unit or a boiler or other asset. And so there are a lot of missed opportunities for energy and water saving due also to the lack in this um, knowledge on how is going uh, the, the process and how energy is used. We have this solution that we are using already, this software solution, in our consultancy in, in the food and beverage industry that is called Mammoth. And here in this project, we would like to step up from a software that is used mainly internally for uh, doing our uh, service of consultancy uh, to going up to a product, a software product that we can sell in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, to, the, to the client in uh, this uh, industry. Mainly is a, a, a web-based platform with some services that are enabled by uh, the uh, data that are collected, organized, and analyzed through the platform. Now I will give you some example of uh, the functions and then some example of uh, the results that can be obtained. We can monitor, analyze with models, with software models, and optimize different assets. I've put here some example like chiller, cogeneration units, boilers, heat exchangers, heat pumps, and overall the heat recovery systems. And these, the function can be the optimal control of the um, asset, for example, the uh, 
real time control of the temperature of uh, uh, the condensation of uh, a chiller, for example, rather than the um, monitoring and uh, uh, heat of the heat recovery system performances uh, to assess the efficiency of this energy recovery system and to go uh, for uh, its out, uh, automatic optimization through the uh, routine that we have implemented in uh, the software. And as I said before, also the water is uh, an important issue that we are dealing with in our um, daily work. Uh, some example of real cases that we have um, um, deal uh, using the software. This is in, uh, a big agri-food company uh, in uh, northeast of Italy. They had a problem with the... Actually, th there was not a real problem. They just uh, had um, an, a, a big chiller for a megawatt that was not optimized. So through the optimization of uh, the uh, condensation temperature. So we connect uh, our platform to the um, control system of this chiller and we correct in real time the uh, condensation temperature that is one of the main parameters that uh, uh, influence the um, efficiency of the chiller. So we got uh, an important uh, uh, energy um, saving during the year, 300 megawatts, that was around 40,000, 45,000 euro each year. This is interesting because it was just uh, by means of control without investment in, uh, I don't know, a new chiller or uh, a big investment from the company. The second example is from a brewery. Uh, they were in this case, an industrial brewery in, in Italy, uh, part of uh, one of the big international uh, corporates in, uh, in this field. Uh, they had already implemented a heat recovery system from the wort boiling, that is one of the most uh, energy cons uh, consuming phase of the, um, all the beer production. Uh, this is the so-called Faduco. I don't know if some of you uh, is familiar with uh, the breweries. And uh, this is the uh, name that is uh, uh, um, uh, internationally used for this kind of uh, system of heat recovery from the vapor coming from the world during the boiling. They had, so this already is told, but they had uh, some problem because it was underperforming. They didn't know why. So we uh, collect uh, uh, data through our platform and we identify uh, a very small problem in a val uh, valve, but was uh, uh, impacting in a, uh, a very um, important way the uh, recovery system. So there was a uh, thermal destratification in the heat recovery tank, that is a big tank with 100 cubic meters of hot water that was not um, operating in a proper way. So we uh, give this information to the, uh, oper the maintenance people and they uh, could repair this valve and uh, save around 30,000 euro each year just with an intervention of uh, uh, so-called, uh, let's say, um, normal maintenance that was uh, uh, found through our uh, set of uh, uh, analysis uh, software. The last uh, um, example is a, a, a big uh, plant of one of the uh, dairy industry. Uh, again, here is one uh, part of a, an, international, uh, uh, an international branch. Uh, and uh, here we made the uh, assessment of uh, the, uh, all the process, and we collect data and analyze through the platform data of all the potential recovery from the hot stream in the process. And we identify uh, different uh, possible uh, solutions. 
uh, like the um, optimization of the energy recovery already done, the introduction of new uh, heat exchanger for uh, energy heat recovery, then the optimization of the existing um, cogenerator, and the optimization, uh, oh, sorry, and the optimal integration of uh, an heat pump in a, a certain part of the uh, process. This is just for it, for now. It's not uh, uh, been rely, uh, implemented, but from uh, the uh, um, simulation we got a very important saving up to six hundred thousand euro for each year, uh, and also an important saving in uh, in water. Of course, this kind of uh, saving. Uh, can be reached uh, with an investment in new heat exchanger, uh, tank for uh, heat uh, um, accumulation and so on. But it was just to give you an example that our solution can be applied not just for the control of existing um, assets, but also for simula simulation of how to implement new intervention for uh, energy saving. Uh, I will. Uh, I give you here uh, an example of uh, an important project that we are doing. That is not just on energy. We are partner of uh, a life project called TTGG. That is the tough get going. That is mainly um, focused on uh, hard uh, um, cheeses, like in Italy, uh, Grana Padano. Then there are other uh, cheeses around Europe, like Comté, Buffor, uh, Queso Mahon, uh, Abondance, and Stilton uh, in uh, England. Uh, we are uh, dealing in this case with energy efficiency, while other partners are more focused on uh, product environmental footprint reduction of these um, uh, productions. If you want, you can just Google uh, the, the project, uh, the life project, and you will find the website with uh, all the uh, information on, on the project. While we are, um, we, we think that our solution is innovative, we are uh, expert in the, in the field of energy, and we have developed with a partner that is, is Optimo, a solution for monitoring and um, optimization with the software. Uh, functions. So we are, compared to other machine learning and software providers, we have the advantage to be expert in the domain knowledge. We are expert in energy. But we have, uh, we use a machine learning and models, software models approach to deal with this um, uh, problem in the, in the field. Uh, the, there are other experts in the in the domain knowledge, like other consultancies or energy service companies, but normally they are not experts in model and machine learning and analytics. So we think we combine both the expertise, and for this reason, our approach and our solution we think are innovative and uh, unique in the in the uh, in, in in the market. Here, who is NSM? NSM is a, a small company that is a spin-off of Politecnico di, di Milano, that is the main technical university in Italy and with a high rank also internationally in Europe and uh, overall in the world. Uh, we are mainly uh, environmental energy uh, expert uh, with also some expertise on uh, algorithm and uh, software implementation, both within our team and with partners. Here I've written CoBrains, that is one of our partners. In the bidder proposal, we will uh, present a proposal uh, with uh, another partner that is called Optimo, that uh, will provide the solution for data collection uh, and uh, um, conservation in database in order then to uh, develop our um, model uh, uh, integration. So what we are uh, doing in the project, in the project we are, uh, we want, as I said, to develop a software product for
for software as a service delivery, delivery to food and beverage EU clients. And we want to strengthen our business opportunities in VIDA countries. We now are two partners and we are looking for a demonstration site that could be either a dairy, a brewery or a meat processing factory. We are also open to consider the opportunity to join the effort with other subjects for a shared demonstration voucher proposal, but of course that is in line with our priorities that, as I said, is to further to step up with the, our solution to uh, get at the end of the project, project a real product, software product that can be used uh, in, uh, in the market. So i looking forward for uh, your uh, questions and also for contact uh, uh, after this uh, webinar if someone uh, directly wants to candidate or if some of the other clusters know that some affiliate to their cluster is or could be interested in such a proposal. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity and I will uh, be here for your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo, for your presentation. And uh, I hope that this webinar, also the VIDA network, will be useful to find the partners that you are looking for to, 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 do, to develop your, your proposal. So now uh, we are going to, to continue with uh, understand from Porfil. He's going to present the, the model for purification of liquid waste. Uh, please, you have to open the presentation that I have already sent to the email of all the participants that, that have fulfilled the registration form. So he will use the conference, uh, this conference room for, for the speaking, and uh, you can follow it in your own computer. Uh, if uh, any of the participants have not completed the registration form and I haven't sent them the, the email, please uh, write, uh, use the chat to write a uh, appropriate chat to, to Irene because I'm not able to read neither write. Uh, this this chat and I will send you the the presentation. Okay, so please, Anders, can you can you begin? Anders, are you here? Please, can you use, yes, no, yes, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Good. Hear you. I'm sorry we have the problems with our presentation, but I hope you have received all of you and that you can open it. But it's telling a little story about pure film and what they're doing. I expect that you have received it and you have opened it. If not, please tell me. Yes, you can speak and all of us will follow the, the presentation. I have sent it to all the participants. So, no worries. And if some of you don't can't uh, have problems with the presentation and, or haven't received it, uh, just write us using the chat. So, yes, you can begin on that. Thank you. Pureville is an eight-year-old company which is working with recycling waste. But we don't think waste is waste. Waste is a recycling product which we have to reuse. We have been mo working mostly with liquid waste coming from the agriculture, the husbandry, uh, mostly manual from the pigs and the cows. And today as well, we are treating public wastewater from the DVCP plants. 
I have been, I'm an educator in agriculture, as an engineer in environmental technology. Uh, always I've been thinking we don't have any use, we need to use chemical fertilizers because like in Denmark we have a lot of husbandry and we know that the content of nutrition is the waste, we call it, from the, from the animals, it can cover all the waste so I cover all the use of fertilizers in growing the crops. When we are talking about pure fill, it means purified filtration. We not just make a pure filtration, but we are doing the purification. This way, we make biofuel from the solid parts from the waste, and we are making concentrates on nutrition. Okay, to help you, please go to page two. Here we have a picture which we have been working with for, yeah, for me for 25 years. We have mostly here from the pig production, we have some waste. But the waste is nutrition and it's a fertilizer. We split it in the biofuel. So we can use that in the biogas plants. Or we can, like today, working a lot with trimic gasification, we can make a very big reduction in the volume and produce the nutrition. Next three. I've been working 25 years within manual treatment, and related to that, we grounded the Cure Field Company. And during the last eight years, we have developed different sort of separators. A program is modelized because we know some hospitals they only have to reduce the content of phosphorus like a little. Otherwise or oh, sorry, oil have to reduce it much more. So using our models we can like Lego blocks put them on top of each oil. So we have only to do the investment related to the needs. And what is very, very important, we don't use chemicals when we do the separation. Because we know today it's talking a lot about microplastics. Microplastics is well the polymer used when you use the normal separation to reduce and concentrate, especially phosphorus. With our equipment, which is only mechanical equipment, we don't use the weight. Sorry, we don't use the chemicals. We use it as the livestock farms, as the VDTPs, and as the today very popular uh, biogas installation. Related to what we're doing in EU, I'm a member as well and a advisor in the Erasmus project called. ETV for Innovation. I am helping a group to make an online course for the young students, especially engineers and as well the SMEs, to know about and to use the new EU ETV verification system, which we know is the future of all sorts of environmental technology in the European Union. Well, it has already been used for several years in the US. China, South Korea. So this, this way when you're producing or you're developing a new equipment as we are doing a lot of us in the SME area, you get a public institute to verify all installation and this way when you're going to the customers, you can tell them this is not our results of the verification, no sorry, of the separation. It is public um, it's public value which is controlled and so it is not a commercial or marketing from our side, it is from the public side. Very good. Because of the sorry, a lot of money used here for the last years, we have developed the first model which is called the Purus. It has been EU ETV verified. Of course, of our investors, we of course have to protect this. 
why we've got a patent around the world already stated in the United States, in China, in Mexico, and here a few months ago as well in all over Europe. Related to farm sites, sorry, we have to go to page four. You could just tell that during the separation, we do that because we need the lands in most areas, no, in several countries around Europe, in the Netherlands, in the north of Spain, Catalonia, Baron, and Baron, they have big problems, too many animals, so little lands, and that's why they're polluting the groundwater. And here we have the opportunity to concentrate the surplus of nutrition and send it far away or just a little away, reducing the transport costs and the to make the balance between the needs and the production. Because Again, I told you from the beginning, if you want to reduce the chemical, sorry, the industrial produced fertilizer, you have to reuse, coming from our close loop, food production, as well as, well as possible. You have examples here of what we do, what we have developed until today, like at the right side, the pure which can reduce the content of organic matter in both pig manual, cow manual, and as well the biological sludge from our VVTPs by more than 70%. The phosphorus we reduced 30 to 50%. And if you want to do it more, you can use the Puro, our ultra filtration system. We can reduce phosphorus more than 90%, the organic nitrogen from the proteins, amino acids, more than 95%, and make a concentrate which is only, like the next, only 15 and down to 5% of the original wastes or the liquid manual. You know, today in the Netherlands, we are cost of removing up to two-thirds of the manual from the country, going to Poland especially, the cost is up to more than 30 euro each to be meter. And if you can reduce that with 90 to 95 percent, you have a lot of happy clients for you that. <laughs> Same time, when we remove it again, we reduce both the contamination of the groundwater and we produce more biofuel. I don't, it's, I don't know, but I expect it's that on the uh, page six, we have a lot of engineers. It is just a technical description of the cure, which is the ground model. And I will hear an answer the time, I will skip it. But if you have any questions, now you have the presentation, please just ask me how it's not working. Yes. I can just tell you shortly that it is a combination of five known technologies which can together in a simple way and only mechanical way to do a lot of reduction, which is not normally seen for a single product. And at the last page, we can see we have done as well with the ECB verification. Then we have got a Danish support, financial support, to test the pure that other source of liquid waste. Here we have two examples we have from the VVTPs, where we are reducing both the primary and the biological or organic sludge coming from. And we do it again without chemicals, this is normally known. Here we have a fish farm where we also reduce and concentrate the organic matter and like also relates to the fertilizer, the phosphorus. 
similar to what they're doing today, but just no chemicals. And when we are participating and we would like to ask for uh, support from the leader, we want to see, like if you have a page one, you need to produce weight, sorry, you need to produce food. From there, we have the manual, which we have to use. And finally, after having the food, we have to eat it, and we have again some waste. And this we have to, again to recycle, going back to the thought. That is why we have the closed loop. So we have today uh, agreements with uh, not to use it, in, sorry, not to present it just in Denmark, we would like to present it in Spain, in the Netherlands. So we have got support from Spanish farmers and as well from a Dutch uh, DVCP, one of the big ones in the north of Holland. It's, it's very interested, we like to try it. So we want to make a demonstration of two different sorts of liquid waste. Thank you. I hope you will follow the presentation. Thank you, Anders, for your presentation and all the IDA partners who you have your solution in mind for uh, prospective uh, proposals for, for the demonstration vouchers. Very, very interested in your, your solution. So now we are going to continue with the, the last piece, piece presentation from Luca Pacifico. He's from Renergy. And he's going to present their technology called Thermal. So uh, I'm going to open your your presentation, Luca, and uh, you can begin with it. Good morning to everybody. Can you hear me? Uh, well, uh, Renergy is a very very new company it was established in uh, July this year and uh, will uh, uh, have uh, a first uh, prototype of uh, of, uh, of our uh, of our product now in this uh, in a few weeks in this current months of of October so we are uh, joining the we would like to, to join the VIDA demonstration uh, voucher, and this is the reason why we are doing this uh, presentation. Uh, as you can see here on page two, we have uh, a patented technology uh, which was uh, developed uh, uh, by our two main uh, shareholders, which are two engineers a German one called uh, Klaus uh, Hermann and uh, a, um, an Italian one called uh, Molinari, Maglio Molinari. So this is the region of the name Hermol, which is at the head of our system. Our systems, as you can see, transforms uh, heat into electricity. So we are able to transfer about 30% of the heat that we receive in our rotary engine generator into electricity. So basically where it is used, it is used in a company whose production process uh, needs heat uh, in any kind of uh, form, maybe liquid, uh, uh, steam, fumes, it doesn't matter. Our uh, rotative engine, Hermol, will produce electricity. Mm. The main, uh, let's say, strong points of, uh, of our engine uh, is that it really works 
8,200 8, 8, hours per year because it needs minimal maintenance. It's a very, a very simple, uh, let's say, engine with uh, much less pieces than other ones. So it needs less consumable. It's self-liquidating and has a low range of rotation per minute. This means it can work properly for a very, a very long time. I, we are confident that it will work uh, for over 10 years. With our engine, any energy consumption, any energy intensive company, like all the many ones that uh, are in the agrofood business, uh, can, uh, let's say, produce energy for self consumption. So, for instance, with the first model that we will uh, put on the market, that it will ask, uh, we are looking for partners to, to test it. The first model has a capacity of 30 kilowatt by working 8,600 hours. It will uh, uh, make 200, nearly 250 megawatts per annum. And so being very conservative, this will make annual savings of, uh, let's say, 20, 21,000 euro on a European level. Then a lot of depends on uh, the cost of energy and uh, additional taxes that you have uh, in any in every country. But this is, let's say, the minimal expected amount of savings. Uh, of course, uh, it's a method that uh, uses uh, circular economy because we use the heat that is not more needed and uh, dispersed into the environment as a fuel to power our engine. All and it's clean energy, not only because we are not uh, generating uh, any uh, polluting, uh, polluting uh, output, uh, but also because uh, it can be uh, at the end of its life, it can be uh, dismantled and uh, totally, totally reused. There are no dangerous products. Even in case of uh, accident, uh, uh, it will not endanger the environment. So, what we are looking for to join the video demonstration is uh, either a food factory or a farm, ideally with a cogeneration plant, or any other energy intensive SMEs, uh, ideally operating. Uh, all around the clock, so 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's uh, that's everything. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Luca, for your presentation, and um, I also hope that uh, this participation will boost the searching of your a new partner for your big demonstration voucher proposal. So if, um, I think there are no questions in, in the chat. And uh, maybe some of the presenters uh, want to to make any any questions or so just uh, unmute your your microphone and, and do it. Uh, I'm Irene, and um, I'm very interested in the global presentation, and uh, I have a couple of questions, if possible, Javier. Um, I don't know if you have already mentioned on your presentation, but I would like to ask you if you know, in the concrete example of Arento, the, co the meat company, the energy saving means in economic terms. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, uh, in the Arento company, um, uh, the, the implementation of everything is still in progress, 
but uh, with the part that has been already done, uh, the, um, the economic savings that has been uh, developed uh, are uh, 29,315 euros. But uh, if they implement all the energetic uh, intelligent system that we have developed, uh, we have detected that they can um, save uh, 100,000 euros uh, per year. Then uh, this, uh, this is still in progress to implement the whole system. But even if they don't implement everything, they will have a big um, save of ma a big amount of money sa in the savings. But uh, of course, it depends on the kind of company, and it's necessary a um, whole study to know exactly how how much each company would would save. Mm -hmm. The second question is that under your experience, um, what factors that might a uh, company like Arento uh, look mm -hmm. for this type of actions? Okay, yes, Aren I think that Arento looks for the implementation of our energy management system because in the agri-food sector, the commercial margins we are very tight, no? And uh, then any saving in the cost structure means an improvement in the competitive competitiveness of the company. Um, uh, as, has, as has been said, uh, energy is, um, is, is important in the structure of costs. Then, then they have implemented this system um, of savings in energy because they can be they can improve their competitiveness hmm? and this is thank <laughs> you for the thanks thanks uh, uh, any other participants have any any question because for example I think that Anders have uh, write something in the in the chat maybe you you want to speak Anders and try if I Amplify it. Yes, thank you. As I'm writing, we don't want to develop things which have been done already. That is why we are interested in make corporations because we can separate liquid waste. But to do it even better, then you have to produce more energy. And I can hear, especially from, from you, that someone has developed something new, which could be, let's say, we have the end products after separation and we can reuse them better than today, then we are very interested in new solutions. Related to the payback time of our equipment, it is always related to what is the present cost. And we're doing the calculation and the offering in the Netherlands, we have a payback of less than a year. But still, when you're separating the man on you, you have a fiber fraction or a solid fraction. And here we can say, in the Netherlands, the landfill gas is going down, and within a few years it will stop. So can we produce more bioenergy by new solutions? Then we are very interested in the cooperation to make the total research. Are we going to, the, to Spain? With the big problems of the groundwater pollution, again we have to move to plus of nutri uh, of nutrition and to reduce some compost, like we call it today, to so, uh, biofuels. Then we can produce gas in the north, and we can send it to the south. Similar for nutrition. So we always open for new uh, operations. So please let me hear if you have any new solutions, please contact Shulfield. Thank you. And that's for your clarification. And uh, I don't know if uh, any of the speakers have uh, other questions. 
So I think not. And uh, we are late, uh, 15 minutes late. So um, we are going to, to finish the, the webinar. Uh, I would like to remember, remind you that uh, the, the next and last webinar will be on the 26th of November that will be focused in the in the visa project justification and uh, all the activities that the beneficiaries have to 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 do, and we will send you all the the information regarding this this webinar in the following days. So thank you to all the speakers. For, first of all, very good uh, presentations, and uh, let's collaborate and let's. Uh, Look for new, new intercross uh, projects through through Vida Vida Network. Uh, I encourage to to all the partners to to do this activity. Sorry, because I think that there is another question. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it depends on the availability of the of the partner. Maybe. Uh, 15 days or something like this. But if you want, I can say, Luca, I can send you an an email once the the presentations and the the video recorded for uh, with the with this webinar. It will be uploaded in in the Vida website. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think that there are not any other questions. So uh, thanks to, to all of you, to all the presenters, and also thanks to, to all the participants that have assisted to this, to this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you for this opportunity, and uh, good luck for everyone that will Fly. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye to to everybody. Uh, Matteo, if uh, you can uh, call me, uh, since you are in Milano, maybe for us it's uh, it's easy to meet. Uh, bye bye.